hello students so in continuation of the code generation uh, mechanisms and their properties today we will uh, continue with the ovsf and the barker codes uh, remember one thing that um, when we choose a code in practice uh, for a typical kind of application uh, we see different kind of the advantages and disadvantages involved in a different kind of the codes and uh, the choice of the code for a typical application is largely uh, largely depends on their two basic properties one is the auto correlation and another is the cross correlation properties uh, the auto correlation function as we have already discussed with respect to your random binary sequences will be revisited and uh, will be recalled and uh, auto correlation function is defined as a very scalar product of the code signals where actually the signal may be uh, shifted by a uh, amount of the delay tau and uh, remember if i am shifting it by an amount of the delay tau and the auto correlation function for all the tau apart from uh, tau equal to 0 should give us a zero value so i should get uh, if i auto correlate one uh, sequence c i mean uh, pnc spreading sequence c with uh, delayed ver version of this c which you i am writing at c tau tau is talking about the delay of that sequence so suppose this is the first sequence c and this is the delayed version of that sequence c so if tau is not equal to 0 so for all those cases uh, i should get the auto correlated value to be exactly 0 so i should get basically but the demand is for tau equal to 0 you will get a very good cross correlation auto correlation value and for the rest of the part you should get a complete 0 value. So, this is the ideal situation of the demand to have uh, to declare that the code is having a very good auto correlation property. Such a good of kind of auto correlation uh, property is required in what kind of the scenario let us see. Uh, suppose in radar or in any positioning system localization uh, uh, it is designing a system for a localized precise localization where the autocorrelation this kind of autocorrelation process is utilized to detect the location and uh, where the autocorrelation process is utilized to extract the propagation delay for radar and uh, positioning system also to you wish to understand actually the typical delay value from where you will extract the location information the high autocorrelation value and the row and the very approximately 0 autocorrelation uh, uh, other values for uh, tau not equal to 0 will be earnestly required. In a mobile communication also for separating the, separating the different propagation paths for example, I have a transmitter and I have a receiver here and I am transmitting from the transmitter to the receiver and via different paths the signal receive gets received in the receiver and uh, the point who are actually helping to scatter the signal in the environment we call them the scatterers. So, the way this uh, movement is going on is like this propagation is going on is like this the same signal it is get uh, scattered by the scatterers who are uh, located at a different position and they are also reflecting the scattered sky they are scattering the wave and they are reaching to the receiver front end. So, you are not only getting the direct line of sight path you are receiving the signal via the scattered paths. So, if we wish to understand the delay and hence the delay associated with the direct path and all other scattered paths they are not same. If we wish to uh, segregate uh, the paths multi paths actually the signals which are received in the multiple paths if there is a requirement to segregate all of them we have to actually estimate the corresponding delays independently. So, for such kind of the situation also the high autocorrelation peak uh, the spreading sequence with high autocorrelation peak and the perfect having perfect autocorrelation property uh, is honestly required. Think about a CDMA system where the different code signals uh, that we already have already have discussed during workshop amount code uh, analysis that in a uh, multi user scenario where code division multiple access is utilized uh, where actually different users are given the independent codes orthogonal codes and uh, they are separated out they are segregated in terms of all those uh, unique codes allotted to them 
and uh, if the different code signal C and C prime we are denoting here is utilized, then they will be utilized to distinguish between the different connections. And uh, also the mutual interference in such a situation when the connection is done, the mutual interference from C to C prime, which is proportional to the scalar product of the C and C prime. And for the orthogonality to maintain all this, we need perfectly actually the codes to be orthogonal to each other. Uh, so, good autocorrelation property is there and good uh, cross correlation property will be in demand when my two codes, two different codes aligned to assigned to two different users and they when they are having a, a scalar product, the product pro output of the product uh, we are expecting to be exactly 0. So, the codes who are having these two kind of the properties are the theoretical speaking is the best code of the demand, but unfortunately the codes are simultaneously having a very good autocorrelation property and a very good cross correlation property. Simultaneously having both of them is uh, almost not uh, almost impossible actually and that is why sometimes we will find that we need to compromise actually in between the selection of the very good either very good autocorrelation property codes or very good cross correlation property codes based on the kind of the application for which they will be used for. See that uh, when we are talking about the code division multiple access uh, systems and we are thinking that multiple users will be there in the network and each of them will be uh, given a dedicated orthogonal codes. So, and if you think that then their interference between the users the multi user interference will be nullified only because of the orthogonality maintaining the orthogonality of the codes itself uh, that is not the exact case because as I have uh, explained in the last slide that when the signal is propagating via wireless communication medium actually it not only um, uh, traverses through the line of sight path it traverses from the multiple scattered paths or the multi paths. On the top of that uh, whenever Hence, the code signals that you are trying to transmit, they are not transmitted always uh, also some synchronized fashion. So, because of the loss of the uh, synchronization and also because of the delays involved in the multipath propagation. So, both of the cases you will be uh, receiving the signals who are delayed by certain amount from the generated signal at the transmitter. And hence, you will be under, you will be always demanding for uh, multi user environment, you will be also demanding that the cross correlation value should be minimized. So, uh, in case of a multi user interference, uh, diminishing the multi user interference, there are the two demands for the code. The codes should be orthogonal, the chosen such a way that we will get a set of the orthogonal codes, and uh, the cross correlation property within the set should be also minimized. And, uh, each of these known types of the codes, they fulfills one requirement to a higher and other to a lower degree. Means, if your autocorrelation is very good, cross correlation will not be actually satisfactory and if cross correlation is really very good, autocorrelation will not be satisfactory in such a way. And um, for your kind of the application for which you are selecting the code, you have to choose a code who gives the best compromise between the kind of the demand you are having. And so, choice will be application dependent and the service requirement dependent. And uh, another method to apply the several spread spreading steps and uh, use uh, different types of the codes for the separate steps may be another uh, good assumption. For example, the type of the codes you are utilizing uh, for minimizing the inter channel interference may not be actually good to, to minimize the inter symbol interference. So, you may actually utilize a different kind of the codes to go ahead with. So, that will be the design with the multiple codes. So, concatenation of the multiple codes, threading codes for the design. Uh, today uh, as I mentioned, today our discussion point is orthogonal um, variable spreading factor codes. If you look the structure of this orthogonal variable spreading factor code, you will see lot of similarity with the world Shadamard code, but the arrangement is little bit different. And uh, we will be arranging here, we will be seeing here as some tree structure getting formed for the uh, orthogonal OVSF codes based on the spreading factor. The spreading factor is usually a power of 2, so you will get the um, spreading of either 1 or 2 or 4, 6, 8 like that. 
So, the way the code is generated, it is in the following recursion process. Suppose you are generating a code of twice the spreading factor, where spreading factor value is varying from 1 to the higher numbers and it is of uh, 2 m and m can be having varying from 0 to s f minus 1. He will be constructed by uh, c s f m and c s f m. c s f m is the previous one means uh, divided by 2, I mean I, it means actually the previous stage values of the codes and the next stage value of the codes will be constructed by the same previous step value and its uh, second position of the second location will be in the matrix will be of just the conjugate of that. Uh, we will take an example to have an idea how the course is, how the uh, uh, typical code is getting generated. But remember this is the composition of the code C comma C here inside the bracket is the composition of the codes. The orthogonality of this kind of code uh, for a fixed spreading factor S f follows the um, above defined equation and uh, the notation variable spreading factor results from the fact that they are applied in the CDMA communication systems offering different data rates. So, um, very good part of this kind of the code is you can generate the several codes, several codes under this family who are having the different value of the spreading factor. Based on the spreading factor, you are basically varying the data rate uh, for to the users. So, if you wish to generate and design a circuit where multiple uh, data rate support is required and orthogonality is also a very important issue uh, in association with the protection against the jamming and the interference control, OVSF codes find lot of uh, applicability in that sense. So, we will take an example here. Remember the total symbol as we are not changing the uh, chip duration and the number of the chips. So, that symbol duration of the generated code will be governed by this equation where the symbol duration is equal to spreading factor multiplied by the chip duration. Let us take an example, we will start with the spreading factor 1. So, the code will be how? The code will be the nomenclature will be C 1 comma 0 because we understand we write the nomenclature as 2 s f comma 2 small m. Okay. We have started with m is equal to 0. Here as the bit is equal to just 1, as SF value is equal to 1 and uh, this is equal to SF value sorry, SF is equal to just 1. So, it will starting with the not 2 SF, it will be starting at least the first one should start with the uh, uh, just SF. So, this is the SF is equal to 2 and um, uh, from S f equal to 1, you are generating S f equal to 2. So, here it will be working like this 2 i is into S f of uh, and comma 2 i is m and the way you will be generating it like this. So, this plus 1 will be repeated for 2 comma 0, but 2 comma 2 m plus 1, this is 2 S f 2 m plus 1, the code will be repeated from the 2 s from the S f and then the second entry will be the complement of the last data entered. If I go ahead further, so from 2 next generated S f will be definitely 4 because it is the power of 2 you are proceeding. Here again this first 2 will be repeated and uh, the second location you have that same repetition. For 1 will be as it is a 4 you will run from 0 1 2 3 because in every case is whatever the value of the S f you are having m is varying from 0 to a maximum that number, it is a s f minus 1 up to that m can vary as we have seen in the 1 point equation number 1.2. So, when s f was equal to 2 m has 2 values 0 and 1, for s f equal to 4 m has 4 values 0 1 2 3 for every s f equal to 4. So, c 4 comma 0 is generated by repeating the c 2 comma 0, c 4 comma 1 will be the repetition of the previous one and the complement last entry will be complement of that. C 4 2 will be the repetition of the previous one, which one 2 1 and the last entry will be that it will be the complement of the remaining section. So, this way we can proceed. So, this is the T structure you are generating. Good part is that uh, there is a data rate variation possible because uh, 
your within a simple duration the number of the chips that you are utilizing they are varying. How C? And uh, remember one thing to establish some connections with the different data rates uh, some rules uh, we have to follow here. Uh, and also to maintain the orthogonality uh, we are uh, in order to maintain that there will not be an interference from the one kind of the user to the next kind of the user. So, the codes that we are generating that should follow certain rule what are those rule uh, better to go to the next slide to understand the rule. So, we generated the sequences like this from C 1 0 C 2 0 generators from C 2 0 C 4 0 C 4 1 generated and from C 2 C 4 2 and C 4 3 generated. So, from each uh, parent uh, one one set of the new child processes or child codes are getting generated. Remember if C 4 1 is already allotted to some user in order to keep the orthogonality and in order to keep that minimal interference property from the other user you should not allow the code uh, which are the child codes of the C 4 1 or all the parent codes from where actually C 4 1 is linked to uh, to the user new user. So, give for this example for C 4 1 C H 2 C H 3 these are the child codes they cannot be allotted as well as his mother is C 2 0 whose mother is C 1 0 and C 2 1 also. So, C 4 1 is heavily correlated with 2 0, 1 0, 2 1, 8 2 and 8 3. So, this is his whole family, this family or can none of the members from this family, none of the code members from this family can be allotted to uh, second user if C 4 1 is in use, but you can allot any other uh, codes from say C 8 9 1 to this sub to the 7 and C 4 0 this will be 0 this is not 9. So, this is C 8 comma 0. So, anybody actually any other guys from the child section or any other guys from the peer section can be chosen for allotting it to the second user. And how the data rate can be varied by using the different kind of the codes or something like that. For some example, suppose some second connection which is having some uh, twice the data rate requirement needs to be provided needs to be supported and uh, then it has to select if I have started already given the code C 1 0 and if the second data second user is demanding double the data rate corresponding to the compared as compared to the first user connection then I have to give either C 2 1 or C 2 0 because within a period of one data bit of connection 1 connection 2 can transmit 2 bits ok. The because the structure if you see is here actually you are transmitting 1 0 and here you are transmitting 1 and here you are transmitting 1 1. So, within the same bit duration here you are transmitting twice the bits, here you will be transmitting 4 bits. So, the data rate if you are trying to see from here to here it is double, from here to here it is double. So, from here to here it is 4 times. So, the data rate variable data rate support in a CDMA network is heavily possible if we uh, allot uh, the OVSF codes and we choose the OVSF code in such a way that uh, along with the data rate support the interference cancellation to some extreme le level is uh, can be can be provided heavily provided. So, the advantages disadvantages of this kind of the code. Uh, the disadvantage of OVSF code is that um, if the orthogonality of the codes it is lost then there is um, and there is no perfect synchronization the cross correlation values of the code increases heavily which is not a very good situation for a kind of the CDMA network where multiple user support is required. But it has also very poor auto correlation property that limits its application sometimes for the kind of the application where your um, high synchronization precise localization is required and in the radar kind of situation where your precise estimate of the delay is uh, to be done. So, um, uh, neither it has a very I cannot say that it has a very good auto correlation property and uh, with uh, um, with a minimal with uh, no synchronization no perfect synchronization situation you can provide you a very good cross correlation also. 
the summary is something like that the OVSF course can be applied to realize the connections with different data rates by varying spreading factors. So, different data rate is the main gain or main uh, advantage of this kind of the course which is not supportable by any other course that we will uh, discuss today in the family of the codes. Orthogonality is preserved exactly even between the connections of the different rates. So, if you are uh, that orthogonality that you are talking about if under the perfect synchronization situation definitely. And this two properties of this or OVSF codes have made them attractive for the modern communication systems like UMTS and IS 95. And uh, with that we will end our discussion with OVSF here and we will try to see some new family of the code. Our next uh, discussion will be on the Barker codes. Barker codes uh, you will see they are utilized in the space spectrum communications um, because, uh, but for some definite kind of application. Barker codes are mainly utilized for the synchronization purposes inside the space spectrum communication, uh, because uh, we will see that the codes available codes in the Barker is uh, not uh, much, no, they are very few in numbers available, because of which they cannot be utilized for uh, mobile communication system where the dense number of the user support is possible, uh, nor actually the length of the codes, even not only the number of the codes are less the length of the codes that are available that are also not uh, remarkably high. So, they cannot be utilized for the code keying purpose or they cannot be utilized for the spreading sequence purpose to avoid the jamming effect and all, but these codes are very very useful for synchronization purpose. So, that is why we will go revisit its property. Uh, Barker codes are characterized by minimizing the certain kinds of the reduced uh, autocorrelation function. So, the autocorrelation function that a Barker code has to follow, has to satisfy uh, to declare a code to be a Barker code, the two autocorrelation functions are this. So, the delay that you are having, if the new is the delay or the shift, the lag over which the autocorrelation you are computing, if the lag is a positive lag between 0 to m, then the computation will go like this, the equation 1.2. And for the negative lag and capital M is the length over which actually you are doing this uh, autocorrelation performing this autocorrelation the length of the whole sequence. And uh, its autocorrelation property uh, for minus m to the 0 I mean with the negative lag values that will be governed by the equation 1.3. The code here always consists of plus 1 and minus 1 and its uh, length is uh, assumed here to be capital M. The code can be said Barker code with all this autocorrelation property if and only if this relation holds good. That is the autocorrelation value should be always less than equal to 1 for all the lags where the lag is varying from mod of the lag varying from 0 to m. So, for both the equations that we have uh, discussed earlier in the last slide for equation 1.2 and 1.3, both the cases actually the output of the autocorrelation computation should be less than equal to 1 to declare the code is a Barker code. Correlating a Barker sequence B of length odd length m, so length of the Barker sequences remember that they can be odd or even. So, if I try to go ahead with the correlation of the Barker sequence of odd length with a concatenated Barker sequence of the form something like this, where alpha i's are equal to minus 1 and plus 1. So, what we have done is we have concatenated the Barker sequences and which uh, and they are trying to confirm the correlation property and which occurs when the spreading sequence of the data beats the out of phase values of the discrete autocorrelation function. It uh, happens actually this kind of autocorrelation happens when uh, we spread the sequence of the data beats and we are getting actually the uh, raw Barker code in the receiver and we are trying to find out the autocorrelation property of it. Then the out of phase values of this discrete autocorrelation function, I mean uh, you can call it uh, as a cross correlation also, uh, it is the out of phase values which is uh, not exactly means of exactly, exactly actually tau equal to 0. 
So, when this guy is going on then the outer phase values for this autocorrelation function it will be turned down to 1 by m and minus 1 by m. These are the smallest possible values that a Barker code can give you. So, the transformation is something like this you either c mu to minus c mu or c mu equal to minus 1 to the power mu into c mu and c mu to minus c m minus u where mu is the delay that we which we were dealing with. The Barker codes available Barker codes and the generation of the codes are very very uh, small and um, length number 11 Barker code length 11 is widely used in the WLAN sequence. WLAN standard is 2.11 standard and not only in the LAN standard in the several space spectrum communication system design this Barker length of 11 is widely used for the synchronization purpose. Uh, these are the few Barker codes that I was saying that uh, is possible to generate and there are no other Barker codes available with the kind of property that we have. Uh, we have already stated related to the autocorrelation and the cross correlation of this kind of the codes. If I follow all that, we will be able to find only the code with length 2, length 3, length 4, length 5, length 7, length 11 and length 13. So, hardly 7 number of the Barker codes you will be able to find for practice. And remember the Barker code number of very short length C2 and C3, they are C4 even, they are not having much use in practice because even for the synchronization, uh, at least a certain, certain length of the codes uh, will be required to provide the, to provide to extract the, um, to uh, estimate the parameter of our interest. And uh, if it is a timing and uh, if it is a timing extra mostly for the timing extraction, the timing information extraction we try to utilize this Barker codes and uh, then also actually you need a, a sufficient length of the chip, such length of the codes I mean the name of the chain uh, of the chips over which actually the estimation needs to be averaged out. So, uh, very small length of the codes like C2, C3 or C4 would not give you a very good estimate because averaging cannot be done over large number of the chips, the available chips are so less. Uh, so, a very good kind of the synchronization is not feasible because the estimate will be very poor if you utilize a very small length of the Barker codes. That is why I was telling that length number 11, length number 13, even length number 7 to some extent for a for a short distance kind of communication Barker codes are utilized. For WLAN this uh, C11 as already mentioned C11 Barker code is utilized for the synchronization purpose. So, Barker is not uh, unusual uh, uh, unlike the other kind of the applications what we have discussed at the beginning of the Walsha Ramat code uh, uh, discussion that codes are mainly utilized for the code keying or uh, multi user support. And, uh, mainly for these two purposes and also uh, for uh, giving the protection against the jamming so environment at the interference cancellation, Barker is not getting utilized for any one of them. Barker is uh, showing that uh, code can be utilized also for the synchronization purpose, which is really very, very important task that we need to do for a successful assessment of a spread spectrum communication system, where code acquisition and the code tracking is of earnest importance to for successful reception and the uh, and retrieval of the data in the receiver. We will discuss this later, but the code that will be utilized now we have already discussed Barker is that code.